So in Calc 2, when we parameterize curves, and also so far in Calc 3, we almost always do it with respect to time t. The exception to that, the big exception to that, was polar coordinates, which are always with respect to theta. But they're not the only ways we can do this. You can actually parameterize with respect to a lot of different variables. And in particular, we want to learn how to parameterize with respect to arc length. This is going to be a very handy trick later on in the class. So I'm just going to make a little star by it, because we're going to do this a lot but later on. So we're just learning the building blocks right now for something we need later. OK, so um, let's look at two interesting questions that we might have if we want to walk along this curve. So here's our curve, r of t. Right? There's our position curve. Now, I could ask, if you start at a given point and walk for a specific amount of time, where do you end up? OK, but that's relatively easy to find. We know how to do that. So you take your start at t equals a, right, your starting time, and you say, OK, well, then that means that r of a is my position at start. And then I would end at some time in the future t equals a plus n, right? So take my initial a and add to it some amount of time, which means that r of a plus n is my position at the end position. Okay, so we look at the graph up here. So this will be the graph for one. You're going to start here at t equals a, which means you're at r of a for your height, and you're going to move along the curve until you end somewhere at t equals a plus n. So you're going to move this way in time Right? And that's going to get you from one position to another position. Sure, we can do that. That's no problem. It's relatively easy to find. We've been doing it so far. But what if I want to start at a given point and walk for a specific distance? So rather than time, which it was for number one, what if it's distance? Hmm. Well, that's going to be a bit trickier, right? So let's think about, um, it's, it's really quite difficult to answer right now. So it would be a lot easier if we could express our function r in terms of distance rather than time. So when you think about um, what we've been, how we've been defining r, we've been defining it in terms of time, t. But what I really want is to define it in terms of some other variable. So remembering that the position function is r of t. So I want s of t to be my new uh, function, which would be the distance between points at t equals a and a general point um, well, I could say u equals a, that would be easier, at u equals a and u equals t. Right? So instead of going um, from a to b, I'm going from a to t, and I'm saying I've got some new parameter u. So r of u is my position now. But with some new parameter, u, right? which is not necessarily t. OK, but that distance means that that s of t would be an arc length function, right? It'd be the distance along the curve. In other words, I would have my starting position here, but I don't walk for a certain amount of time. I walk for a certain amount of length, and I stop when I've hit the length that I was looking for. Right? Rather than going through time and saying, OK, I'm going to start at time one second and end at four seconds, I'm going to start at this same position, but I'm going to go until I've hit 50 meters or something like that. 
All right, well, we can do this. We can define it a different way if you want. Um, and that's what we're going to do. So we want to parameterize um, with respect to arc length rather than with respect to time. So this is going to be a very handy skill that we will use. OK, so let's do one more comparison of the two methods here. So I've got my position function here. And you can see it's parameterized with respect to time. Um, and I'm just going to mention right now, we're going to assume radians. Okay. Okay. So that's my trajectory measured in distance, um, uh, measuring distance in units of meters. If you start at point T equals zero at the point P three zero zero, where will you end up if you walk for four seconds? Okay. So I want to walk for four seconds. So T is going to be equal. Um, T is going to go from zero to four, right? So I'm going to start at zero. I'm going to end at four. All right, lovely. How does that work? Well, my position then would be equal to R of 4, which would be equal to 3 cosine of 4, 3 sine of 4, and then 4. Now you see what I mean by radians. We're assuming that these are in radian measures here. OK, and that would be negative 1.961, negative 2.270, and 4. So at 4 seconds, if you walk for 4 seconds, you will end up, this is your ending position. So you're starting at 0, you're ending at 4. So if you walk for 4 seconds, your end position at t equals 4 is your position at 4, which is this, according to your position function right here, which is defined in terms of t. All right, seems reasonable enough. Fine. I'm just going to separate this a little bit. OK, but I want us to kind of take a look at what we're doing here. If we think about what this is, this is a slinky. <laughs> it's a spiral, right? It looks like a slinky. And it's climbing in the t direction. So you have a spiral. You start at 3, 0, 0. Because at t equals 0, this is your starting point. So this is your starter right here. Start. Oh, I don't want to use that color. Sorry. Um, right here. That's your start. So you're going to start at 3, 0, 0 right here. t equals 0, 3, 0, 0. That's your starting point. And you're going to climb, because t is positive right here, so you're going to climb in the z direction. So it's going to go, oops, sorry, let me move my page, like that. And so what we just found was at 4 seconds, we ended up at negative 1.9, that's the x direction, negative 2.7, that's the y direction, and 4. So we climbed this way. And we got back here in the background, right? Because you're a negative for both x and y, so you must be in the octant that's in the background, um, which is, I think, octant 2 or 3. Octant 3, I think. So you're climbing into the background. And so this green part right here is this green part right here. So you're ending up right here, that ending point at t equals 4 was at negative 1.961, negative 2.270, 4. OK, suppose I don't want to do that, though. Suppose I want to climb for 4 meters. I just want to walk 4 meters. Well, that's actually going to be smaller um, than because this particular one was climbing four in the z direction alone. So that means that this won't be as far. So I want to know where I'm going to end up. So what if I just say, hey, I want to walk for four meters. So that's four meters distance. Then where do I end up? Right? Then what's my ending position? Well, that's going to be a little bit different to find. So let's work it. All right, we're going to start with our position function. So I want to name r of u would be 3 cosine u, 3 sine u, u, right, rather than t. So if you look at the original functions given to you, it's in terms of t. So I'm just going to name a new variable, a new parameter u. Then r prime of u would be equal to negative 3 sine of u, uh, 3 cosine of u, 1. 
right? because that's the derivative of that. Okay, now using the fact that s of t right here, s of t is equal to that integral right there, I'm going to use that piece right down here. So this will be step one. We're going to um, find s of t, right? So to do that, we will take uh, the integral from a to t, absolute value r prime of u, well, magnitude, sorry, magnitude of r prime of u du. Okay, so that's the integral from a to t. Okay, so at time t equals 0, it was 0. So this will be 0 right here. Up to t, t, whatever that might be, because I, I don't know. I know I'm starting at time and, and position 0. Like, that's just my start. I haven't gone anywhere yet, so my distance is 0. And then, or my arc is 0, if you will. So then this would be r prime of u, so it would be the square root of uh, negative 3 squared, or negative 3 sine of u squared, plus 3 cosine of u squared, plus 1 du. Ah, but this right here, That's 9 sine squared u plus 9 cosine squared u, which we all know is 9 by a Pythagorean identity. Okay, so then this is going to be the integral from 0 to t of the square root of 9 plus 1. 9 plus 1 is 10 du, which is the square root of 10 u from 0 to t which would be um, 10 square root t. This is my function, s of t. So s of t equals 10 square root of t. All right, lovely. So now step two, we need to solve step two. Um, and I, here's what I'm doing. I'm following these steps. I evaluated my integral, got it. Solve the resulting function for t in terms of s. So I need to solve s of t equals 10 square root of t for um, t in terms of s. For t in terms of s. Okay, so it's currently s equals 10 square root of t. So it's currently s equals 10 square root t. So that means that s over 10 equals the square root of t, which means t is equal to s squared over 100, because you would square both sides, right, to make the um, square root go away. I just looked down and I realized that I messed this up. I'm so sorry. So it's not, hold on. It's s of t equals a square root of 10 t. It's not 10 square root of t. I'm losing my brain entirely. It's the square root of 10 times t. Sorry about that. 10 square root of 10 times t, which means that this is much easier than what I just did. This is square root of 10 times t, which means that um, this is much simpler. It just means that t is equal to um, 10, or s over the square root of 10. Let me just write it like that. t equals s over the square root of 10. Sorry about that. All right, so my fault. So let me, let me go back real quick. So right here, 10, square root of 10, u, but u goes from 0 to t. So you just put t in there, right there for u, and then that gives you that function. So this is s of t right here. So then you want to solve this for t rather than solve for s like it currently is. It's currently s equals, right? So this is equal to s. And you want to solve it for t. So you divide both sides by the square root of 10, and you'll have t equals s over the square root of 10. Sorry about that mistake. All right, so now rewrite r of t as r 
of s. So r of t was, uh, let me write it out, r of t was equal to, it was given to us, was equal to 3 cosine t, 3 sine t, t. So that means that r of s is equal to 3 cosine of, uh, let me think, instead of t, we'll put s over the square root of 10, 3 sine of s over the square root of 10, and then s over the square root of 10. Oops, sorry, that should be a bracket back there. And there we have it. We've now redefined our position function. It's no longer, so we have a position function in terms of time, t, but now we have a new position function, same position, same curve, but this would give us position in terms of arc length, in terms of how far we've walked along that curve. So if they want to know how far you've gone at s equals 4 meters, what they want is for you to plug 4 into that new function. So you find r of 4, which would be um, 3 cosine 3 cosine of 4 over the square root of 10, 3 sine of 4 over the square root of 10, and then 4 over the square root of 10. And that would be your new position. And of course, we can come up with decimals. I think I might have already done it with maple. So here's the curve you're walking along. Here's the spiral, right? And so, yeah, right here. So if you walk four meters, so I just made maple find what those values were with the square roots of 10 and so on. Um, I, I um, maple actually rationalized, which I don't really care about, but it did. So it's 0 0.903, 2.861, and 1.265 meters. Just notice very briefly before we're done here that this is still an octant one, just like when I drew it. You haven't actually gotten as far as you did on the other one. So if you look here, it's not as far. You're still in octant one because everything is positive. All these numbers are positive. So you actually haven't gotten that far because of course you've only moved four meters, as opposed to moving for four seconds, which gets you further up the spiral. So this one is in a different octant, and I'd have to look it up to know which one, but it's no longer an octant one. You've moved past that, whereas this one is still an octant one. Now, this little trick that we're doing here of defining it in terms of arc length, this will not be the last time we see that. We will actually do that quite a bit, just as a warning to you. That will come back to haunt us many times. So I'm just going to make a note. Um, this is less distance than for four seconds. And there we have it.